welcome to episode two of Inside the World of TCR, our monthly trip around the TCR universe, from the World Series, WTCR, to the regional championships and the national series. Plus, we'll be meeting two TCR champions, Stefano Comini and Jean-Carl Vanet. Stay with us. WTCR, the FIA World Touring Car Cup, went to Villa Real in Portugal for its fifth meeting of the season. The headline was that Ivan Muller claimed a lights to flag victory in race one and jumped to the top of the standings. But some of the title contenders were sidelined after a massive crash. A catastrophic collision at the start eliminated one third of the field and resulted in a long suspension while the wrecked cars were recovered and the barriers repaired. The two Volkswagen Golf GTI cars of Rob Huff and Mehdi Benani that had started from the front row came together at high speed a few hundred metres down the track. They hit the barrier, bounced back and were then collected by the rest of the field in a massive pileup. Both Huff and Benani were transferred to the hospital for medical checks but luckily they only suffered bruises and concussion. Let's watch it again from on board. This was a shocking crash. It's been a long time since we've seen anything like this. When the race restarted, Muller took the lead and never looked back, as he was followed by Esteban Guerreri and Gabriele Tarquini. The Italian suffered a puncture on the last lap, and Pepe Oriola overtook him for the last spot on the podium. In the second race, the result was decided on the penultimate lap, when Muller went for his joker lap, and Matto Homola, who'd already taken his joker, regained the lead. For the Slovak driver, this was his maiden win in the WTCR, and the second for DG Sport Competition and Peugeot. In race three, Ted Björk took a dominant victory, proving to be in a league of his own and taking his joker lap with a comfortable margin in the early stages. The drivers behind him then formed a long line, running nose to tail and fighting okay, for the okay, positions okay, from caution, second to fifteenth. With the championship leader Muller scoreless in race three and Vernet pocketing only one point, the situation on the leaderboard has changed slightly. Muller remains on top with 182 points, 22 clear of Tarquini, who's now second, on the same number of points as El Ache. We sat down with the 2017 TCR International Series champion Jean-Carl Vernet to find out more about JK and his career. I do the job that I always wanted to do. I took the decision when I was five years old. It was Mardi Gras and I came dressed as a racing driver and that exact day I decided that's what I wanted to be. My grandfather was a hill climb driver and my father did some karting. He was a good karting driver. For Christmas they offered me an overall and a helmet. And so at school for Mardi Gras when everybody dresses up, there were boys dressed up as policemen, firemen and Zorro. And each time I dressed up as a racing driver, from five years old until I was nine when I moved to middle school. After those early days, JK has taken part in many races and scored many wins. So what's the secret behind such a successful career? I believe I'm one of the very few drivers with such a background. I don't want to sound arrogant, but I have many titles in so many different categories. I did single-seaters, finished second in the F3 World Cup, I won the Indy Lights in the US, the Porsche Carrera Cup, Le Mans, I did LMP2, LMP1. I've done so many things, and this proves that I adapt quite quickly, also because I quite often won in my first season. I'm not particularly interested in cars, you know, Porsches, cars in general. I'm not an expert and it doesn't interest me at all. My thing is the passion of driving and of the win. I've always had this. My goal is to achieve the ultimate lap, to have a challenge all the time. Yes, driving is my passion and most of all, competition. 
and this passion for competition bought the French driver the TCR International Series crown in 2017. If I win this title, it is because of all my experience in so many different categories, because it was really complicated. We were not supposed to grab the title. We didn't have the fastest car. We didn't set a single pole position, and we won just a couple of races. But we had been very consistent. We never gave up, even after Salzburg ring, where I didn't score a single point and I broke four ribs. Afterwards, I did two races with broken ribs, where I did really everything I could. It was only in China where I realized, OK, we're going to beat them. Tarquini won, but I took the 25 points as he was transparent. We had a wonderful car, and I said to myself, it's OK, we are going to win. In fact, the title was achieved at the following round, the season finale in Dubai. In 2018, Vinay is taking part in both WTCR and TCR Europe. The goal is to win the two if we can. Doing the two championships allows me to get very well used to the Audi. For the moment, things are going well in WTCR and TCR Europe, even if I am a bit behind because of the two races I missed. But we are confident, and it's also good for our sponsors. After Le Castellet and Zandvoort, TCR Europe went to the legendary racetrack at Spa-Francorchamps for rounds five and six. Vernet, who had to miss the races in Zandvoort because of the clash with WTCR, managed to set the pole. Moro, with electrical problems, and Davidovsky because of damage suffered during qualifying, didn't even make it to the grid. Vernet and Maxime Potty started in front, kept the advantage at La Source, and then there were no dramas between the pair. Stefano Comini, debuting with the Honda Civic, struggled to find a good pace, but he's always hard to pass. Behind him, Josh Files, clearly faster, couldn't find enough room to overtake. He outbraked himself at the bus stop, cutting the chicane. And immediately after, while giving back his position, he was challenged by Stian Paulsen on the inside. While trying to defend, he braked too late at the La Source hairpin, and Comini made contact with the Brit. Richet benefited from the contact and climbed to fifth ahead of Paulsen, Richard, Cruz and Nage. The incident was a massive disappointment for both Comini and Files. That was the second DNF of the season for Files. And again for Comini, there were no points to take home. Nine laps into the race and the battle for 11th was extremely tight, with Attila Tashi challenging Jens Renault Muller. Challenging too hard, perhaps. This is how he sent Muller into a dangerous high-speed spin at the exit to Radion. For the move, Tashi was demoted from 11th to 17th at the end of the race. So, the first win of the season for jean carl Vernet. Maxime Potty was second and Mikael Athkona third. It was extremely tight right to the end between Borkovic and Brichet, with the Serbian finishing fourth, just 43 thousandths ahead of the Frenchman. In the second race, Rhys Barr on pole position and Chris Richard alongside him kept the advantage at the start, while Stefano Camini from the second row pulled to the side when his engine went into safe mode. For the two-time TCR International Series champion, it was a zero-point weekend. After La Source on the downhill to Eau Rouge, Chris Richard overtook his teammate to grab the lead. There was bad luck for title contender Dusan Borkovic, who lost several places on the opening lap because of this contact with the Cooper of Danny Cruz. Julian Brichet had a terrific race. This is when he overtook Stian Paulsen for fifth place on the second lap. At the end of the same lap, Jean Calvinet tried to overtake Potty for third, but he went wide and cut the chicane to rejoin the track. While giving the position back, he was then overtaken by Brichet, a smart move from the Peugeot driver.
The Julien Brichet show then continued. This was when he overtook Maxime Potty for third at Les Combes, with Vernet also passing the Volkswagen. On that same lap, Attila Tashi suffered a puncture and stopped in a dangerous position at turn seven. The safety car came out to allow the recovery of Tashi's car to take place. At the restart, Richard kept the advantage, while Files slowed because of an electrical issue. For the Brit, this was another DNF. No points for him from Spa. Seven laps into the race, and Richard, Brichet and Vernet were in a close fight for victory. At the bus stop, Vernet tried to overtake Brichet, but lost his brakes and made contact with his compatriot. Vernet then retired with broken suspension. On the following lap, Richard and Brichet were two abreast at Les Combes. The Frenchman passed, but there was contact between the pair, which sent the Peugeot straight on at the chicane. Brichet rejoined without losing P2. On the last lap, Brichet tried the same move at the same spot, but there was no way to overtake. Chris Richard crossed the finishing line first, but after the race, the stewards of the meeting reversed the first two positions. They decided to impose a one-second penalty to Chris Richard for the contact he had with Julien Brichet at Les Combes during the penultimate lap while they were fighting for the lead. The penalty gave Brichet and the Peugeot 308 their first victory in TCR Europe. In the driver's standings, Adkonar now has an 11-point lead over Borkovic. Vernet is third, but has a 39-point gap to fill. In Spa, we caught up with 2015 and 2016 TCR International Series champion Stefano Camini. We asked him about his life and how his passion for racing started. My poor mother did the biggest mistake in the world when she treated me to a rental go-kart when I was only six years old. The owner of the track told her that there was a kind of talent there. Then my mother spoke to my father, who was working hard at the time and was looking for a possibility to spend a bit more time with his son, and this was the perfect opportunity. He bought me a second-hand go-kart, and at the beginning I was using it down the streets of the Swiss village with about 500 people where we were living. His passion for touring car racing arrived quite soon. When I was 10 years old, I didn't watch F1, I watched WTCC. I preferred it because there was more fun, there was more overtaking, action. It was real motorsport with real contacts. I was passionate. During his whole career, his dad has always been present, and not just as a spectator. My father barely manages to be just a spectator, and this is quite a difficult element to control. He's very emotional, and I inherited that. He's so emotional that sometimes it's up to me to calm him down. After the successes of 2015 and 2016, Camini had a less positive season in 2017, finishing third. 2018 is supposed to be the base for a new start in his career. I lost 16 kilos, and since January a 13-person team is following me. Race Republic is giving me everything I need to come back to the top. They also built the contact with Autodis and THX to race this Honda. For rounds three and four, TCR Asia went to Thailand at Buriram International Circuit. Pole sitter and championship contender Luca Engstler pulled away right from the start, and behind him there was a tight battle between his two teammates, Diego Moran and Mitchell Che, for second place. With just two laps to go and with a six-second lead, Engstler suddenly slowed down and retired because of a front-left puncture on his Volkswagen Golf, leaving Che and Moran to fight for victory in the sister cars. Mitchell Che was eventually first to take the chequered flag in front of Diego Moran. Pater Parol completed the podium. 
Lo Shei Ho was fourth, Chiria Nuya fifth, and Liu Li Ka sixth. With the reverse grid, round four was a lively affair. Douglas Ku took the lead at the start. Four laps into the race, and Diego Moran, after starting ninth on the grid, took the lead from Chiria Nuya. Two laps later, and the Thai driver was also overtaken by Luca Engstler for second. Diego Moran then managed to keep his teammate at bay till the checkered flag, and so grabbed his first victory of the season. Che only scored eight points because of a puncture, but remains the leader of the TCR Asia standings with 83 points. Engstler is still second, now with a 15-point gap. TCR Germany went to the Red Bull ring in Austria for rounds five and six. In the first race, Niels Langevelt started well from pole with Antti Buri in second, while from P3 on the grid, Max Hesse had an awful start. Mike Halder tried to overtake Harold Prochik at turn one, but missed the braking point and hit the back of Buri's car. The Finn, though, was able to control his Audi and held on to second position. Three laps into the race and this happened. Lucas Niedertreider's Peugeot and Daniel Davidovac's Opel made contact and crashed as you can see from this slow motion replay. The incident meant the safety car was deployed. You can sense the immense frustration for Lucas Niedertreider. On lap nine, Prochik ran a little wide at turn one, and Leuchter and Halder didn't miss the opportunity to overtake him, moving up to third and fourth respectively. The positions remained unchanged for the rest of the race, with the Audis of Langevelt and Buri making it a 1-2, followed by Leuchter's Volkswagen Golf, Halder's Honda Civic and Prochik's Opel Astra. In race two, pole sitter Sandro Kaibach made a poor start and was beaten to turn one by Luca Engstler, who'd started second. Lucas Niedertreider started third but was quickly overtaken by Leuchter and Prochik. On the second lap, behind the fight for the podium places, Sebastian Stiebel lost control of his golf and crashed into the innocent Yussi Kusinimi. Again, the safety car was deployed for several laps to recover the cars. At the restart, while Prochek overtook Sandro Kaibach for second, Antti Buri was clearly determined to encore the second place he'd scored in race one. Later, Prochik took the lead from Leuchter. While Antti Buri had worked his way from fifth position on lap seven to fourth on the following lap, before soon passing Kaibach for third. On the penultimate lap, Buri then overtook Leuchter for second place, and that's how it finished, with Prochik's Opel, Buri's Audi, and the Volkswagen of Leuchter making it three different car brands on the podium. Behind those three were Luca Engstler, Florian Thoma, and Luke Wankmuller. Prochik now leads Langevelt by 22 points, with Luca Engstler third, a further four adrift. TCR Germany next visits the Nürburgring in early August. <laughs> Round five of TCR Russia started without Mikhail Grachov and championship leader Alexei Dudikalo, who qualified second and third, but eliminated each other in a bizarre collision during the formation lap. Grachov started from the pit lane and finished 11th while Dudu Carlo suffered from a broken front suspension and sat in the pit for the whole race. Look All Racing's Klim Gavrilov finished fourth, ahead of Irek Minakmitov. Dmitry Bragin, who took the lead at the start, resisted the assaults of the two other Lada Sport Rosneft drivers, Vladimir Shashenin and Kirill Ladijin. For the whole 18-lap distance, the TAIF motorsport man was able to maintain a half-second gap between himself and Shishenin, with Ladijin following a further five-tenths adrift. In the second race, Lukol Racing's young recruit Ivan Lukashevich started well from second on the reverse grid, ahead of pole sitter Lev Tolkachev, who forced Roman Golikov's Volkswagen Golf GTI onto the grass. Golikov lost control and crossed the track, forcing Irek Minakmitov's Audi RS3 LMS into the gravel trap. Alexei Dudukalo suffered a puncture, and so, once again, he scored no points. Oh. 
For Ivan Lukashevich, this was his maiden victory in TCR Russia. Tolkachev finished second and Gavrilov third. The fight for the title is wide open. Bragin leads with 87 points from Ladijin on 82 and Lukashevich with 80. Gavrilov and Sheshenin both have 77. Rounds five and six of TCR UK took place at Brands Hatch and in race one, for once, it wasn't championship leader Dan Lloyd who was first into turn one. Ollie Taylor had switched to the 2018 spec Honda Civic and the decision looked to have paid off. It didn't last, however, and Lloyd took full advantage of a slight mistake by Taylor to dive up the inside and take the lead. Lloyd then took the victory to keep intact his incredible run of five wins from five races. Ollie Taylor finished second and Lewis Kent scored his first podium result of the year by finishing third in the Hyundai i30. In race two, pole sitter Carl Swift made a good start in the Cupra and led the Honda of Josh Price into turn one. Because of the reverse top ten, Lloyd had to work his way through the pack from ninth on the grid. This is the moment he first passes Jessica Beckman for third place and then immediately overtakes Josh Price for second. Price then lost more places when he ran wide going through clearways. It seemed inevitable that Lloyd would take the lead from Swift and sure enough the Volkswagen passed the Cupra exiting Druid's Bend. Lloyd was now on course for win number six. Lloyd's teammate Jessica Beckman also had ideas about passing Swift for second place but her move wasn't quite as clean. Nor was the passing manoeuvre carried out by her brother Andreas in the third West Coast Racing Golf, who made contact with Swift while the pair were fighting for third. Andreas Backman soon pulled into the pits and retired with broken rear suspension. Carl Swift's race was also ended by that contact, with a bitterly disappointed Swift missing out on his first ever TCR UK podium. Dan Lloyd took his sixth win of the year, ahead of a delighted Jessica Beckman to give West Coast a 1-2 finish. Howard Fuller finished third, ahead of Stuart Lines. The result means Lloyd has a massive 99-point lead over Taylor, with the Beckmans separated by just three points. Luigi Ferrara took his third win of the season in the TCR Italy Championship at Misano. At the wheel of his V-Action racing Alfa Romeo Giulietta, Ferrara made good use of his pole position and led from lights to flag, followed by Salvatore Tavano's Cupra and Plamen Kralev's Audi RS3 LMS. Scalvini finished fourth, Mugelli fifth and Schmal sixth. In the second race, target competition's Jürgen Schmal claimed his maiden win in the series. The race was red flagged after this huge pileup that ended with a roll from David Nadali. Schmal crossed the finishing line in second position, close behind the Cupra of Andrea Larini. However, the latter was given a 25 second time penalty for an infringement during the restart behind the safety car that dropped him to 15th. Ferrara still leads the championship in front of Tavano and Greco. TCR Scandinavia raced at Andersdorp for the second event of the season. On a track that was drying after a shower, Johan Christoffersen started well from pole, but he was passed by Hagloff and Morin during the opening lap. For Philip Morin, it was his first win in TCR Scandinavia, leading a PWR Racing Cupra 1-2-3 finish, with Daniel Hagloff and Robert Dahlgren completing the podium. In race two, Matthias Andersen's Honda Civic made a perfect start from pole on the reverse grid and led from the Brink Motorsport Audi RS3 LMS cars of Brink and Mika Olsen. Four laps into the race, Anderson went wide at the last turn and retired because of a puncture, while Brink inherited the lead. So, Brink won in front of Dahlgren and Ekblom. Dahlgren has now taken the lead in the standings with 73 points, 12 ahead of Hagloff. Christofferson and Vernerson have moved up to third and fourth. Ryan Eversley claimed his second win of the season in the TCR category of the 2018 Pirelli World Challenge in race one at Lime Rock Park. 
Eversley and his Honda Civic started from pole and led for the whole race until it was red flagged with around three minutes left. In the second race, Michael Lewis, who started from pole, and Mark Wilkins took command of the race from the start in their Hyundai i30N cars and kept the lead until the chequered flag. Fourth place helped Eversley to retain the lead in the standings with 136 points. That then was Inside the World of TCR. See you next month with more action and excitement, but for now, it's goodbye.